Uh, my name is Sarah Freilich, uh, the co-founder of Design Research Collective. I'm super excited to be here for our third Coffee Talk Live with my friend and colleague, Lucy Candler. Mm -hmm. Lucy has worked with uh, DRC and the Collective several times. Yeah. Over the past couple of years, we've gotten to know each other. But she's pretty awesome in her own right. She's faculty at the University of Minnesota at the College of Design. Mm -hmm with a specialty teaching apparel design. She works on graphic design and presentation techniques. I got a chance to visit with her class and do a guest lecture. Um, her students absolutely love her. She's head of marketing at Sudabloom, yep. um, a consultant with Candler, creative strategist and project manager. Yeah, That's how we've had you. Worked at Girl Friday, creative apparel concepts, um, has a BS in apparel design, mm -hmm. and most exciting is getting her MBA from Carlson at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay, here's our quick teaser. Lucy is responsible for some of the design. If you have ever purchased pajamas uh, from maybe Target. Yeah, and also, so I worked for a brand called Monkey Monkey, and yeah. we had an offshoot called Night Night Monkey Monkey. And Shannon and I were just talking about it this morning um, via email uh, because the Monkey Monkey brand had a um, original print designer. It's like a print heavy focus, which is mm -hmm. also something I'm really passionate about. And the original print designer is Heather Ross. She's like a pretty big name in print design. Um, and so when I worked for the brand, I worked on prints a lot. Um, I was the apparel designer, but I got to like kind of Moonlight as a print designer for the brand. And um, it was really interesting because I had to learn Heather Ross's like style um, and learn her line quality. Um, I just remember I was drawing once a rabbit and the um, art director for the brand, she would draw over my lines to correct like the angles of like the rabbit's ears to make them how Heather Ross would draw a rabbit's ears. Um, and I just, that was just so such cool. a moment of me of like learning like how style worked for that brand. And it was, it was really fun. I so really if that. someone out there has a pair of rabbit pajamas, <laughs> Heather Ross style by the Monkey Monkey brand. Oh, actually. You have something to do with them. The rabbit one didn't go forward. Okay. It was a rabbit on a pogo stick and okay. we scratched that. But um, the, one of the most popular prints is this postcard print that I did. Um, and then for Night Night, I did the um, Hot Air Balloons print, which was also really popular. Oh, cool. So, yeah. And then I know some of your designs and your work has shown up at Target. You've done some mm -hmm. all types of apparel, like Disney licensed apparel. And yeah, you got yeah. to do the design. And so people are buying, back in the day, certain Disney. Totally. So Monkey Monkey um, was sold at like Nordstrom's and then online. Um, and we also had the Disney license, which was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, it's really rare that Disney gives a company the license to edit their characters. Normally, they are just like, here's the assets and yeah, good don't, luck with don't what we have. Them. Yeah, exactly. It's like cut and paste. Yeah. But um, they allowed our art director um, to redraw the characters, which was just like such an awesome moment. Um, and I got to go to the conference. Um, in California, mm -hmm. where they like show all the new um, products and movies that are coming out. And it was oh, super cool. fun. Yeah, it was a great time. Is there a t shirt or like a character on a t shirt somewhere that you had an impact on? No, I didn't. Uh, we kept the art director as the person who worked on that collection, okay. which was great. Um, I got to work with Star Wars though a lot. Yeah. And so I got to be the creative director on our Star Wars collection, which was through a line called Retrospective. Cool. Um, and that was super fun. I worked with a super talented artist on our team um, and really like made these sort of like 80s looking Ooh. like kind of stranger things esque like with the star wars characters it was super fun so people have a star wars t-shirt yeah you may have been involved yeah in the maybe that yeah cool cool and then, yeah i also worked on um a small collection called will call for target that we did some like rock and roll oh. hall of fame like stuff for kids and there was this really awesome run uh run dmc like um, kids pajama set that I worked on. Oh my gosh. That was so really cool. cute. Yeah. It's so amazing to think about all the people that touch the items when you, especially yeah. at a Target, you go through like yeah. all the thought, the designer's thought. Yeah. 
um, telling people I worked on a pajama brand was always like the people's faces would just like light up and be like pajamas and like footy pajamas. I'd be like, yeah, like sometimes footy pajamas, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like that was like a, a great icebreaker back in the day. And do you, is there a difference for you in like technical design of the clothing as opposed to like design, like color and style and print? Do you do both yeah. of those? Yeah, um, so the apparel field is really divided by um, what we call aesthetic designers and technical designers. Okay. We actually, at the U of M, where I teach, we just changed to a two-track system. So we used to have, like, everyone who graduated graduated with a technical and aesthetic-based degree, and now you can choose a track. So you can either do both now, or you can just be a technical or just focus on aesthetic. Um, so the difference there being the technical really understands, I would say they're a little bit more human centered because they're really thinking about the fit. They're thinking about like where seam lines are going. Um, they're thinking about sizing a lot, which is, I don't know, a very interesting part of apparel as you know. Yeah. Um, so that's more the technical track. And then the, the aesthetic track is just doing the, it's really more of the design, how the garments are going to look. So the technical side tends to come after the aesthetic side because they're just making sure that the aesthetic side is going to work and look the way that we want it to look and those sort of things. Oh, but, neat. And what about you? Where is your passion? I'm the aesthetic side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm pretty much the only faculty at the U that really focus on the, on the aesthetic side. We've got some brilliant minds there. Um, and there's a lot of technical and research that's going on there. So mm. a lot of the other professors really focus on awesome projects with NASA and just crazy stuff. But wow, for fabrics. And... Yeah, yeah. We actually had um, two of my students last year had just interned at NASA when NASA redid the um, their spacesuits last year. Um, it was the first time they'd redid their spacesuits since forever, basically. Yeah. Um, so the way NASA works is once you have something like a spacesuit that works, you can't really test it out. They, they're pretty strict about, like, if something works, you don't fix it. Yeah. Um, so they've had basically the same spacesuits designed for forever, um, and they just just redesigned them last year. Oh my goodness! So when we turn this into a podcast, we'll probably create show notes, and I hope we can show a picture of some of your Star Wars designs, and maybe even some of the new <laughs> spacesuits that are coming out if that's public. Yeah, yeah. I'll, um, there should be pictures online okay. of the spacesuits that just came out. Well, if you're watching live, just Google Na new NASA spacesuits. And let yeah, us, let it us was pretty cool. Look. There was a, I forget the name of the companies that were pitching for it, but there were a few different co companies that were pitching to make the spacesuits. It was all outside contractors. Wow. Um, and one of my students uh, was telling me that while she was there, they were taking applications for the people who would sew the spacesuits. And you had to be like, of course, the most skilled, you know, seamstress yeah. in the world to work on these because you can't, you can't like backstitch. You can't undo something and, and, and fix it. It's the first time has to be perfect on those spacesuits. Wow. I never thought we would get to spacesuits today. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Okay, so we had this question we ask, especially when we do our research, and you've been there because you've done research yeah, yeah, with for us sure. on yeah. apparel. Um, Jekyll and Hyde, your day persona and your night persona, or your day title and your night title. What, what did you think about for... Yeah, so my day title is definitely um, faculty at the U of M. Um, so I teach three classes a semester, um, mostly within the apparel field, but I also teach graphic design classes there as well. Um, yeah, and so that's the day. And then Professor Lucy during day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. And then at uh, night, um, I think it's like the Capricorn in me, but my night is still a job technically. There's no like, there's no off switch for oh. working. Um, I think there's that like there's that saying about like if you love what you'll do, you'll never work a day in your life. I think the Capricorns should be. If you love working, you'll never stop. Yeah, you know. Um, but so I work also as a creative strategist and marketing for a plant-based yogurt company called Suda Bloom. It's um, based on some sunflower seeds for a startup, so we haven't launched yet. Okay. Uh, it's been a very long process, um, but it's been really, really cool to work on that brand. And oh. I do packaging for them and um, social media marketing and 
um, just creative strategy in general. Oh, that's so awesome. So, you know, when we originally talked, you were like, I don't know if I'm a human-centered designer. Yeah. I've never used that title. Yeah, totally. I mean, you like, so, I was so just like, I don't know, Sarah, am I an expert enough? And she is. It was, it was really fun to, to just, I don't know, yeah. be able to sit down and talk to you about human-centered design. I mean, the field is so new and it's so evolving that even the moniker human-centered design, yeah. I don't even love it. We, we say design research, they're just design thinking, sure, sure. but at the end of the day, it's about putting people at the center of your design yeah. and decision-making. And like as soon as, I mean, I was the more I thought about it, the more I was like, oh my gosh, that is exactly everything that I do is human-centered mm -hmm. design, um, specifically with being faculty, the way... I create a lot of um, classes and curriculum and really just thinking about the students who they are now. Um, the students nowadays are so different from when I was in school. Mm -hmm. There's just diversity at every level. Um, there's gender diversity, there's sexual diversity, there's um, background diversity, mm -hmm. there's ethnic, racial, religious, uh, income diversity is a, I think a really big one that we don't talk about enough within yeah. the college community. It's very different than how it used to be um, and all of that those differences make the classroom so much more dynamic nowadays mm -hmm. but they're also really have to think about when you're creating curriculum how is this going to be equitable um, how are students learning nowadays you think that they're really technology based but this new cohort I have of freshmen is they don't want to touch a computer it's yeah. really interesting they're just very interested in using their hands and so thinking about how do you, how are these students learning? How are they, you know, um, absorbing information? Mm -hmm. um, when what time of the day are they best like suited for learning? Uh, how can we make sure that they have like a schedule in place and understand things? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of um, just talking to them and every time we create a new project, I ask them, what do you think about this? Should we change the rubric? Really? Yeah, because I want to make sure that they're getting the most out of it. If they're thinking about a rubric that isn't going to work for them, then they're just designing for that rubric. They're not actually like mm -hmm. learning anything. So, oh, um, that's huge. Like reflecting and asking for feedback. Yeah. On what could be better? Yeah, pretty much every day. <laughs> that has to be really unique for a professor. Um, I think it's like a new way that people are starting to think about um, learnings. Um, yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of um, research into ungrading is this new concept because we're realizing that like grades may, grading is maybe not equitable either mm -hmm. um, in the way that we've kind of like had these really rigid structures so looking for ways in which the students are actually grading themselves um, or providing a lot more like interpretation into the grading that's taken into consideration mm -hmm. um, or just like doing more projects that aren't graded um, I do a lot more like daily projects that are just participation like if you were here and you, you know, participated in the conversation and mm -hmm. the project, then you get just participation points for that day. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have like larger projects in which the grades are a little bit more strict, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that like they know that what I care about is their input, not mm -hmm. that they did it quote unquote correctly. Yeah. So how does a pair, like when you're actually designing t-shirts, pajamas, how much... Do you include research or work with actual human bodies and yeah. human feelings? Yeah, that's great. Uh, so when I started working at the last company I worked for in apparel, um, I actually started in the customer service and sales area, hmm. which um, I wanted to get out of there so badly. But uh, the sales part of it, because really the sales part was just making sure orders went out, was in, sorry, but incredibly boring. Yeah. Um, uh, but I stayed working on the customer service side, and I kept my phone as the phone that people would call with customer service questions, and I stayed like answering all the questions on our Facebook page and our emails because I really wanted to like learn what are the questions that our customers yeah. have. Like, if we're if I'm not the one directly receiving that information, it's so much harder to design for that person. Um, I was really young at the time, so I feel like I didn't like fight enough for the things that I knew the customer wanted. Um, and I feel like now I wish I could go back and like redo that and just fight more for that customer. Because I feel like a lot of times we 
didn't take them as seriously mm-hmm. as we should have been taking them, like their requests. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That's something I think about a lot. But what are some examples of something like that? Maybe the customer yeah. is seeking that. We had changed the fabric. And they kept requesting this, the original fabric, which is this like cotton poplin that um, the original designer had talked about how it was like the, her, the sheets at her, I think it was her cabin when she was growing up, like those cotton poplin yeah. sheets that you, you kind of wear, they're stiff at first and you kind of like wear them in. Um, and she was so right about that. And we had moved away from wovens into knits. Hmm. And I... I hated it using a, a jersey instead of that cotton poplin, um, and it was just what we decided to go forward with. And I, I wish I'd fought more for bringing back that like original fabric. Yeah, I think oh. about that a lot, actually. You do. Oh, that makes me want to like touch the fabrics. And yeah. Find out. Yeah. When I worked at Target with the um, apparel team, I just I couldn't believe how much effort and thought is put into it. just the fabric you choose. Totally. Yeah, working with Target, that was like a really big thing. Um, we had this really awesome uh, library of fabrics. So it was like an entire room that was like just racks and racks of these like swatches of fabric. Wow. And so you'd like go in there, you would find one that met your needs and your price point. Mm-hmm. Cause obviously like price is a big thing. Um, and in the apparel industry, the price of fabrics can change because duties change based on like mm-hmm. fiber content. So you know, polyester might be more affordable one season and cotton might be more affordable a different season. So you kind of have to like have options there and then also make sure that those options are approved by whoever you're the vendor for. So for like Target, um, they really want to check hand feel and then when the product comes in, it has to meet that exact same hand feel, which is actually pretty hard to do, to be honest, because you're getting these like, it's almost like if you think about dye baths, how it's hard to replicate it. If you're recreating fabric, it sometimes can be hard to make sure the quality stays super, super consistent. Um, Yeah, I remember hand feel when I was at Target. It was like, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. But then the designers use it all the time and you start to realize. And so I remember like kind of posing a bit and being like, check out the hand feel. (laughs) After a a good year, I understood what it meant and got to use it with them. Yeah. And of course, like wear testing is really important, mm. washing and wear testing to see if that maintains, like that fabric maintains its quality. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the most important thing, fittings. So you do a in-person lab fitting on a human body mm-hmm. once a week, probably. We would do like a, it would take a, like one to two hours because you get all these samples in and you need to, you know, see that the fit is correct and do all these adjustments. And that's with the design team and the technical team wow. do that together yeah um yeah sizing is probably such an interesting yeah kind of area yeah so to. you have like a fit model and it's her job to just stay the same size she can't change she can't gain or lose weight oh. and so um we use the same fit models that target used because we wanted to make sure that we had consistency in our sizing and so she her job is just to come in and try out the clothes and stand there and she's like a normally a we have like a size medium because mm-hmm. you want your base size and then normally you would do like a, a one X for your plus size. Oh, that's so fascinating. Would you get to know the fit model? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a job someone could have. Like, yes. I'm a fit model. It's a job. And like my job is to not gain or lose weight. Yes. <laughs> and then go in. That's so neat. Yeah. I love telling my kids like what different jobs are out there. Yeah. I can't wait to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> the industry has changed a lot though. Um, so much of it now is digital. So there's a program called Clothe 3D. Okay. It was a program that was created to design clothes for like um, video games. Like that was really? how it originated. But now we use it to do a lot more fit testing so that we have less samples that are going getting shipped overseas. That the lag time and also the like cost and sustainability factors are one of the reasons that like Clothe 3D is becoming so popular. Yeah. It still is not perfect. Um, There's a lot of problems with, like, trying to get something perfect on the screen and expecting it to look exactly the same way in real life. But it is hopefully something that will just continue to get better and better and Mm -hmm. um, improve fit and also improve, like, the sustainability and timelines. Do you teach your students the concrete? Yeah, um, both the classes I'm teaching this semester will learn it. 
Okay, so wanted to know from you as an expert in your field, and I'm reminding you in case <laughs> Thanks, you forgot. Sarah. <laughs> um, like an example of good design, or like when you get really excited, they're like, they really figured that out, or they, oh yeah, they, I love this brand or this because of this. Yeah, um, I can't wait to hear. Well, so I stuff. always like like thinking about like industries that need change, so not necessarily like brands. Um, I am definitely a sucker for good like brand design. Don't get me wrong. Like I will buy a product just because they did a good brand design, even if the product is not great. Do you have an example? Um, well, I don't want to like, say that a product isn't great, but um, uh, I think the industry that's like really hitting it right yeah. now in terms of like human centered design is the NA beverage industry. I was like so interested in that a few years ago, and it's been so exciting to see how that industry has grown yeah. they really saw this like problem that um especially after the pandemic there was a lot of people that um decided to go sober or um just you know realize some of their bad habits that they developed and it's been really cool to see how just now we have restaurants that are all na beverages we have any menus at a lot of bars nowadays um and then the whole beverage industry just around that is just like so insanely cool you're totally right Feels like at the same time that the NA beverages, then the CBD or THC. Yeah, the for sure. Also, like, yeah. they're so creative. Do you have a favorite NA brand? That I don't that actually like making my own just cocktails. So yeah. awesome. Um, any other? I was gonna. I feel like I had to talk to you about pockets. Like okay. it's required. <laughs> And anyone that knows me well personally knows I'm obsessed with pockets and yeah. all clothes. Yeah. And I, I can't understand why there aren't. You were telling me about your daughter's butt mitts or dress, and you're like, and it is pockets. Yes. That was, you yeah. know, half the reason I Yeah, had. for sure. Have you, yeah. Do you have an opinion on pockets and oh, especially think, women's clothes? Yeah, I mean, pockets, I think, are essential, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in our pajamas, we had pockets. We had, like, multiple pockets. There was, like, the chest pocket and the pants pockets, and that was always something we'd, like, call out, especially on social media. Oh, it is pockets. That's so. awesome. Other products or brands or experiences that hmm. come to mind, or the opposite is, like, the bad ones, the one you're like, why can't they figure out? A good human-centered designer needs to get on this. Okay, so the good ones... So I do social media, and mm -hmm. social media, I think, is a thing that all of us are getting really tired of, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, like, burnout in social sure. media. Um, but two brands that I think are doing it well um, is Graza. It's, like, a new olive oil company. Mm -hmm. Their, like, product design is also just really nice. We're, like, we're writing it down. <laughs> and then the other one is um, Ourobora. They do like a, a, it's a beverage and um, like a sparkling water and their flavors are really interesting, but both of their platforms feel like really inclusive and more just like, kind of like your weird friend, yeah. um, which I think is something like we all need to work on. It's just community building. There's so much like advertising and like influencers. And so that's something that I'm really working on with my team is like, how do we just like build community mm -hmm. and make people feel like there's like a safe space on their Instagram feed, you know, mm -hmm. like when they're scrolling, it's not, it's something where we're like adding to their life by being, by something that's more like, hopefully this just brightens your day coming across this, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. that's neat with the brands that you're working on. Yeah. The yeah. sunflower and, um, a person, a book, a guru, a professor, is there anyone that you follow or listen to or love that yeah. we should know about? Um, so I just went to this biomimicry conference last semester and Janine Benius uh, spoke on biomimicry and it was just like boom, like like brain explosions the whole time. Um, just really just amazing. I don't know, she was very cool. Uh, biomimicry is like the study of like how nature can solve a problem. So like, for instance, Velcro was a biomimicry. So the designer of Velcro was like walking through like a prairie and he got like those burrs stuck to his clothing and was like, oh. And obviously that took like a lot of iterations, but that's where we get Velcro from. Um, oh. And there's just like this study of biomimicry is so, like it's really hitting this like beautiful high point where we're realizing 
um, that there's so many things that nature does that we've tried to design our own solutions and nature's already solved it, the problem, so, yeah. Oh, that's such a neat example. What's, is it her name, their name? Oh, the uh, uh, speaker. Oh, Janine Benyus? Janine Benyus. Oh, yeah. cool. I yeah. Look it up. Um, yeah, some of my other favorite biomimicry examples are there's this new paint that um, there's like a specific leaf that you know, like how water um, tends to just like flow off of leaves. Yeah. Um, so the paint has a molecular structure that prevents like water or like stains or anything from staying on it. It's like just runs right off. And so it's like super easy clean. Um, there's this like shark skin has uh, this pattern etched into it that's kind of looks like scales but it prevents like bacteria and stuff from building up on sharks. And that's the same pattern that you see if you ever have like a hand scanner, if you have to enter a building, mm -hmm. that same pattern is normally etched into like the hand scanner to prevent like bacteria buildup on the hand scanner. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, there's just like all of these things that nature's already solved. We just need to learn how we can replicate it. Yeah, or like observe, yeah. or listen, or watch. Yeah, uh, also a new one is Nature creates color a lot of times by angles, not like dyes. Like, you know, in we, everything that we're wearing was dyed to be that color. But butterfly wings, it's like an angle that creates that color. And so um, they're figuring out ways to do like car paint and even clothing colors that will literally just be gray, but it'll look like a color to us. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is so Which cool. will hopefully prevent all the um, dye issues because there's a lot of like biohazard stuff with dye. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed like uh, you posting or talking a lot about sustainability in apparel. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we produce what is it's like seventy percent of emissions is the apparel industry. It's some there's a thirty percent or seventy percent. It's something crazy. Something, though. Either one it's something bad. that's like really bad. Okay. Um uh yeah, it's pretty awful, especially nowadays because we've Thought, we think of clothing as so disposable um, and we just like if you think about the way that now a t-shirt costs less than a hamburger like a high-end hamburger like that's crazy like how could a t-shirt which is like has to be the material has to be made and dyed and then somebody has to sew it and then it has to be shipped across the world like how could that be less than than beef that was produced in America. And literally, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, of course, like the cow has to be raised and all of that, but it does seem like that process is a lot shorter than wow. the process to create a piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. And that hamburger is meant to be eaten in one sitting, and that clothing should be worn for decades. How could that clothing be less expensive? Yeah. Well, Oh, that's really interesting. Are your students talking about this? Yeah, there's a, I mean, sustainability is really hard in apparel because a lot of it is greenwashing. There's just, the solutions for clothing are, are pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many cool people working on solutions, and it's awesome the way that we're working on, for instance, like um, polyester recycling. Uh, one of the seniors last year did her whole project on just polyesters and the sustainability options within that. Just trying to create a platform that will um, show designers, like basically like a, hmm, how, how would I put this, like a Wikipedia or like a Google search, but for polyesters. Oh. So like if a designer wanted to like ha find a sustainable solution, they could go to her platform and put in like what their... Um, what they were designing for and they would give them like options that fit that yeah. but the industry is so new that it's still really hard to find solutions that are scalable um, a lot of them are like beginning research yeah I'm so excited that you are leading students in this space you're such a great mentor teacher mm -hmm. and I'm glad you're all thinking about that. Well, thanks. I mean, um, it's really the students. They're the ones that are, like, super interested in yeah. it. And it's, a lot of times, they're teaching me because, again, this is such a new field. Yeah. And um, so they're all going out and pursuing different avenues in which this can work. I think the biggest thing for me as a teacher is reminding them when 
they say a lot of times they like to say, so it's the sustainable option. And you're reminding them, is it really the sustainable option? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of more like checking that and making sure that they're yeah. like actually doing the research to see if an option actually is quote unquote sustainable. I'm, I'm looking to see if anyone else has questions or anyone in the chat, no worries. Um, but my last question is around just your career journey. If somebody wanted to work in apparel and do design, human centered type design, yeah. is, is your path the path to take or is there another <laughs> path you recommend? I don't know that my path is even replicable because yeah. it's such a weird, yes. I mean, we could sit here for another hour to talk about like yeah. the different jobs that I've had. Um, <laughs> so I don't know about that, but I think like um, the main thing with human centered design is just curiosity and being really interested in creative problem solving. Um, I think those are the biggest keys. If you have that, that that's probably a place you should look at careers in as human centered design. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you so much for those who joined us. Um, and next time you're wearing your pajamas and if they have pockets and it's really soft, it might be something Lucy helps Maybe. Yeah. Um, have an awesome day. Bye.